Sara. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Dahivina? I'm doing all right today. Things are looking pretty good. And uh, thank you for taking time to uh, interview here today. Not a problem at all. I was wondering, just to start off, if you could just describe your life in Second Life. My life in Second Life isn't very much different than my real life. I um, come in here and work. Uh, sometimes I go to exhibits or visit friends at their place, you know, at their house, or meet friends. Um, wherever I go, I usually take pictures to, you know, chronicle or take records of the things that I'm doing. And when I'm alone, and this is what I do most of the time, is try to make um, sculptures. I use Second Life sometimes to model sculptures I want to make, um, that kind of thing, <laughs> or make sculptures I could never make in real life. So, I mean, that's about it. I, yeah. I'm usually, you know, by myself trying stuff out in Second Life. How long have you been in Second Life? I was born in Second Life on October 12, 2006. So, I've <laughs> been in here since then. Okay. And some of the things we talked about uh, discussing here today is uh, issues of self, that there's, of course, the whole concept of self is a difficult one to define. Um, it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like we have a a permanent sense of self that our self is kind of evolving and it's more like a waterfall than a than a uh, a rock or something I guess you could say could you uh, talk about mm -hmm. that some how is a sense of self here for Zyra second life Zyra is is just like any other person I think I think she is in here trying to figure out her purpose and um, answer the same kinds of questions that a real person would ask. Um, she is, I guess, an, an extension of my real-life self. You know, um, I'm building memories here in the virtual world that are um, in addition to the memories that I have in the real world. So, you know, she's she definitely is an extension of, of myself and has her own set of memories and, and things that are specifically Xyrograph. Yeah, it does. What you say questions anybody asks, what would, what would some of those be? Interacting with other people in the virtual world, you know, um, I especially, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word, try to do cleansing after I interact with with other people and make sure that I'm, I'm still myself, it's even though it's a fuzzy thing that you can't define. Um, it's something I developed a long time ago because of the artwork. I used to notice, um, especially with critique, because I went to I went to college to get an art degree. Especially during the cri critique, I would find when I got back to my journals that I had ideas in my head that were not mine. Um, about my own artwork and that disturbed me <laughs> if there is any place uh, that should be pure and free of other people's influence it's it's my creations and so um, specifically I tried to with Xyrograph here in the virtual world because with okay. Xyrograph I, I, it's, it's kind of like a meditation you know, a clearing um, I did a paper uh, about source misattribution where you have ideas that aren't really yours and um, you you use them as if they are yours and so I, I try to clear out other people's thoughts from myself yeah, sounds certainly. weird and I, I don't know how else to describe that but that's I try to do I don't think it sounds weird at all I think uh, you know, we get other people's thoughts and I don't mean to this sounds somewhat psychotic perhaps but <laughs> we get other people's thoughts <laughs> placed into our mind all the time uh, what people expect of us what they uh, you know, want us to do advertising for example and I would think uh, uh -huh. certainly in my shorter experience in Second Life 
I can very much see that occurring here just as well as anywhere else. Right. Uh, yeah. um, the cleansing, the yeah. cleansing makes some sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't sound crazy to have other people's thoughts um, in, in, in... It doesn't sound psychotic. <laughs> I guess, I mean... Because you... I think it would be um, regular psychology to to have the idea that there's people, other people influence the things that you think. No? Right. It, it yeah, I was referring to, to there is a uh, there is a type of psychosis that people with, say, schizophrenia have, where they literally think uh, other people's thoughts are placed into their minds. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. yeah, that would be disturbing. <laughs> Well, I mean, another experience that is the being blue, I mean, it, it actually makes a difference. I mean, in real life, I'm defined by my color as soon as I walk into a room, and the same thing happens in Second Life. I mean, a lot of people really adore the blue, but I did have one person tell me that I look like a devil. I mean, and, and in some sense, I I actually have on my Facebook profile that I am Kali. And so, so, in some sense, that's okay for me to look like a powerful god or demon. But, so, that's Zyra's experience alone. You know, the the being blue and the reaction to it. That makes sense. It's a... Uh, yeah. You can certainly have more... It opens... Uh, Second Life, I think, would open up more possibilities for who you would like to be, what you would like to experience, uh, that mm-hmm. sort of... Those sort of things. Is that something you have found? Personally, I mean, other people in Second Life have taken on different um, figures. I mean, dragons. Um, there's a culture called the furries, where they are um, animals, like furry animals. Um, and the tinies, where they're ti- they're small animals. But um, I, for some reason, have never felt the desire to do that. I, um, yeah. I maybe... I specifically look at um, the virtual world as an extension of my real life, and I have no desire to be um, a fantastical creature except for the being blue part. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite color, and um, and yeah, you know the well, how I ended up blue is a story in itself. But I mean, for other people, there are just to being and being able to be anything that you want i mean men can be women and women can be men in here so i have done that i i do have a male avatar oh so so you can have um, i suppose you can you can have more than one avatar hadn't thought of that but of course you could right right so i mean you you can extend yourself in that way it's pretty interesting I, i have I have a friend here in Second Life that I um and you do develop friendships <laughs> in the yeah. virtual world. Um, but we we talked about that one time because she she was like, I wonder if I actually sound like a guy or if my my speech, not in voice, but just in the things that you say when you're typing into chat, if you can tell that you're a girl or not. That's a good question. I think it's, uh, that would be an interesting thing to to uh, try to, to study, actually, to see if you have, how well you can change your typing speech patterns to uh, represent the opposite gender, right. the opposite gender right. avatar. Right. Um, so, that's one way of changing. The idea of possibly, at some point, transferring your consciousness into the, the virtual world. Um, discuss that a little bit, if you would. Sir. And, the, and the singularity, I suppose, is the other thing that you wanted to talk about. Well, Ray Kurzweil says that the this, this singularity, which is a technological term, not the usual physics term, right. where technology will advance exponentially and um, we'll have kind of an explosion of technology. And at some point, we will probably be merged with, um, with technology and be different somehow as humans evolve. And there's the idea of mind upload, where you would be able to transfer your brain or your brain processes into a computer, possibly a virtual world, maybe a robot, maybe some kind of combination of uh, cybernetic being. 
group, something like that. Um, and I am actually working on the idea of uploading my mind into a virtual world. Why not? I mean, I could be Zyra all the time. Um, and, and that to me isn't, isn't a bothersome thought. Uh, so I'm working on something. I'll be presenting it at, uh, the Towards the Science of Consciousness conference called the Singularity Sanctum. Um, as an artist, I think that my artworks are a special part of my experience. There's that hard problem of consciousness, right? What it is that makes you you, um, what it's like to be you, and um, the Singularity Sanctum is going to be a collection of um, some of what I call um, cumulative artworks and then other things that are important to me like um, I, I do actually have a real life sanctum where I go to work and um, the urns of my grandmother and grandfather I have them there in my sanctum and my bible and my Tao Te Ching <laughs> that kind of thing so I'm making a duplication of it my idea is that um you know, that question of being able to just copy your brain cells into maybe a substrate independent kind of mind and just having you wake up as yourself, I I don't fully accept that. And so to me, I would have this like a training place of, of my mind to reconnect with memories of, of myself in some kind of quantum, mechanical, non-local way. <laughs> <laughs> use quantum physics as a metaphor but uh you know that kind of thing i would say that it's it's possibly a metaphor i mean given that we don't exactly know uh, the nature of, right. of consciousness and subjectivity that um, why why it perhaps it's more literal than metaphor <laughs> with quantum you know, that somehow it's existing as a primary aspect of, of mm -hmm. uh, the universe yeah and the heart problem it just sort of occurred to me David Chalmers is the heart his, his classic heart problem uh, mm -hmm. that uh, perhaps it's not much harder of a problem if you will uh, to go from mm -hmm. this bio, this biological neurochemical consciousness holder our brain to a uh, mm -hmm. just more you know, silicon based chemical consciousness holder of the uh, avatar and the virtual world and mm -hmm. android or what have you yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think, and and since you mentioned David Chalmers, I actually should say that um, when I went to the last Tucson conference, he talked about the singularity and, and um, mind upload. And the, the singularity sanctum is actually based on a theory of his called um, the Cosmoscope. It's a hypothetical epistemic tool. And he gave a list of... of maybe a, a mechanism that you would be able to use to learn about the world or any world um, by knowledge about things and so he said it would have a, some, a supercomputer virtual reality tools holographic tools and kind of a your hair marker which in in my case would be Zyra would be the the avatar would be the center of a of the experience and I mean the rest of the stuff I don't have a super supercomputer <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, or, or, um, but definitely we're in a virtual reality and I eventually hope to be able to project, um, Xyrograph holographically. Um, that has already been done. I believe there's a, a holographic pop star in Japan, or is it China, um, where she performs. So, I mean, that, that is a possibility. <laughs> So, <laughs> I have to give credit to the fact that I, I have appropriated um, David Chalmers' <laughs> idea to my own purposes. I bet you he wishes he had somehow uh, uh, copyright wrote the uh, hard problem, easy problem, because that's used so much now that <laughs> he would be yes, probably a very, very wealthy man. Uh, those are fascinating. That's fascinating thoughts. And that we're already getting closer to it. And we had... Uh, yeah, I... I mean, I think Ray Kurzweil is in some sense right. I mean, there are things that we can do today that one... I mean, this seems like science fiction. I mean, 
that <laughs> we're sitting here talking in a virtual world. Wow. So, um, I I think it, it might happen. When I look at my my experience just right now, this sort of what it is likeness to be in a virtual world. You know, I have the mm -hmm. view where I'm just I'm just looking out of my eyes. I don't see myself just like I do regularly. Uh, the mm -hmm. my attention is focused on you and the room and your pet fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, my exper <laughs> my experience is very much right here. This is the, what it is likeness of being in the virtual world is really quite quite real. Quite real. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's another experience that's completely um, Zara Graf is having my pet fish swim around my head all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I mean, once I, um, I don't, I, I did something and, and lost it in my inventory and I actually felt kind of bereft. I, I missed having the fish <laughs> oh, I could, swim I, around I could my that. head. It's like I a part of my identity. Yeah, I could see that very much. I know, uh, when we first met, yeah, Zyra and Abana, myself and you first met here. I first met your fish. I thought this was what really, you know, quite frankly and quite peculiar. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I have uh, I have grown to uh, like your fish as well. I think you I, become I would... accustomed. She really grows on you. Yeah. No, I mean it's kind of like having a a, a dog or a cat with you all the time. It's, yeah, it's of course. My virtual world familiar is a fish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, very good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been looking into some of this existential stuff, and one of their sort of axioms is existence before essence. You're probably familiar existence with that. Existence before so. essence? Yes. Ex uh -huh. Existence before essence, yeah. How does mm -hmm. that apply in this virtual world, do you think? You have to be to exist to be able to discover the essence of being. Right, I think Heidegger says yeah, I think that. So. Um, yeah, the uh, I am a being that to whom being is a, a an issue, a problem, and so it it applies in the virtual world in that because I've made um, because I've become let me not say made <laughs> because I've become Xyrograph, it it allows me to discover things about myself. It's a it's a another way of experiencing my quote-unquote self so that I can be more clear about the essence of who I am, closer to, to what it is. And I, I believe that it has been a useful tool. I mean, I suppose six and a half or seven years ago before I became Xyrograph, it wouldn't have been a thought to me. Um, or, or an acceptable thought to think about uploading myself into a virtual world. But having had the experience of being an avatar and and seeing that I do get invested in, in her experiences, it's become something that is acceptable to me. So I've extended the meaning of, of who I am and who I can be. Um, so that's how it applies, I believe. Fascinating. Being and becoming in this virtual world and second life. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> being in the virtual world. So being there's a was it Dazen? I don't never know if I pronounce that correctly. That's I I believe is how yeah. you say it. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Um, okay. Those are the main questions I had. Um, did you have any other thing you would like to discuss? Well, uh, in in talking about you know expanding my my ideas or or my what what would be acceptable acceptable ways of being, um, a part of my artwork is investigating spirituality, and so I I come upon the uh. issue of um, religion. To be uploaded into a virtual world is is kind of a way of. Um, being immortal I think conceptually it can be equal to um, you know the afterlife the promised eternal life um, to be uploaded into 
into a, a virtual world specifically. I mean, there are other ways you could become a, a cyborg, a cybernetic thing, or even a robot with a brain in it. But I kind of like the idea of a virtual world. Even as a, a middle ground, I still believe that that training, you know, acclimatizing yourself to a different way of existing would be necessary to any kind of transhuman existence after after a regular human existence. I mean, you're, you're in a way you're talking parallels between the idea of heaven and the idea mm -hmm. of, a, of a virtual world. Yeah, I think I, I mean, because you have to resolve the things that you believe and so that they they cohere. <laughs> True. <laughs> right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so I, I think, I mean, I, I... You would be immortal if you were uploaded into a virtual world. Unless there was some malevolent um, AI that just decides to shut us all off. You could <laughs> live forever in this form. And so, to me, it's it's eternal life. You know, they talk. You know, in the Bible, it talks about the uh, the new world and the millennium, mm -hmm. and those sort of things. So maybe maybe we're looking at the new world. <laughs> maybe it occurs to me also as we talk, though, as we you know, as you talk about moving into moving into. I guess that's the right word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> moving into a virtual world. Um, who's going to maintain the hardware? Uh, necessary to keep the virtual world going. I have no clue. It's a, it's a problem I've been grappling with. I mean, there's ethical issues. If we have a uh, developed super intelligent AI that is super efficient and want to use those to maintain the virtual world for us um, and allow us as humans to live an eternal existence, there um issues of what's basically slavery. I mean, do they have a choice in maintaining this for us? So, I'm I'm not sure um, who would maintain it. I mean, there's also the question of who who, as in a corporation would maintain it? The government would maintain it? And part of the idea that I'm doing now with the singularity, singularity sanctum is that I'm not actually working in, in second life I'm working in open sim open simulator which is open source and so the idea is that if if I can I mean when I should say if I come up with a, a methodology that works it would be repeatable someone else could just duplicate their own singularity sanctum and put together their collection of, of what they would want um, to have um, for their uploaded mind when they when they go to the other side woo, when they <laughs> when they're uploaded into the virtual world so I mean I don't know I, I haven't a clear answer on who would maintain something like that well within here's just as I think about this within a virtual world you have the I guess the uh, computer silicon pathways that allows your consciousness to exist, and we'll sort of say that's that's what's occurring. Why would that uh, system not be able to go into a hardware that is embedded into a, um, a robot sort of creature, and then mm -hmm. those uh, that those robots then could be, you know, employed, if you will, by the Second Life uh, to uh, maintain the uh, external necessary hardware and servers and all those things that are uh, that keep this world going so it wouldn't necessarily be slavery so much as you'd have uh, uh, a work employees yeah yeah sort of yeah right. public <laughs> public <laughs> public servants if you will yeah just mm -hmm. like the uh, uh, people working for the county build our roads uh, we could have some folks that just, mm -hmm. and then you could re-upload your consciousness back into the second life world from the from that uh, android Oh, that's true. Um, I guess that is that is an option. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's an idea. I have no, no idea. How I'm feasible sure. That is. Huh? I have no idea how feasible that is, of course. But I had no idea right. this was feasible a couple of weeks ago. So. 
<laughs> you mean you mean being in a virtual world or the idea of mind uploading? Uh, being being in a virtual world, uh, being in a virtual yeah. world. Because I'm I'm only about uh, two weeks old. Actually, I don't know my actual birthday now that you say that. But I'm only about two weeks old here in Second Life. Yeah, it is a pretty cool thing. I mean, we're sitting in an office talking like we would in real life. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of nice. There's yeah, artwork in here by real life artists, um, you know that kind of thing. Plants in the corner, stuff on my desk. Right. <laughs> it's not that much different from yeah, real exactly. life, except my real life desk has never been that clear. <laughs> yeah, because you're very. Yeah, my, <laughs> mine's not even close. <laughs> yeah. So, I I mean I I can't think of anything else um eh, related to 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 this I find this whole world amazing uh, to tell you the truth and I want to thank you Sarah for uh, encouraging me to <laughs> come uh, explore it because uh, I find oh, it really quite wel- quite fun you're welcome yeah and there are many amazing things here I mean um, all kinds of historical builds. Uh, you can visit other cities because there's some um, duplications of actual cities um, around the world here in Second Life. Uh-huh. It's kind of an interesting thing to experience that, and and the the cross cultural interaction. I mean, there's many many different um, people from all over the world in Second Life. It's it's kind of a a wonderful thing. There's millions of people in there, is that correct? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they have millions of of members or subscribers, however you wanna residents, sorry. Residents of Second Life. Re- that's what we're calling. Residents, them. exactly. There you go. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well very good. <laughs> very good. Um, All right. Thank you for okay. doing for inviting me to talk. Well, thank you. I really I really appreciate it.